Hello and welcome to News Hour from the BBC World Service, coming to you live from our studios in central London. I'm Julian Marshall. Nine months of conflict have seen a remarkable change of fortune for Tigrayan military forces in northern Ethiopia. They were routed when last October the Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed sent the Federal Army into the Tigray region to put down an insurrection by the regional TPLF government. Thousands of lives were lost, tens of thousands of people were displaced before Mr Ahmed declared victory at the end of November. But Tigrayan forces regrouped and in June recaptured the regional capital Mekele and then much of the territory they'd lost, forcing a retreat by the Ethiopian army and their allies from neighbouring Eritrea. But the government in Addis Ababa continues to have a stranglehold on the Tigrayan region, hampering the delivery of much-needed aid supplies. And in recent weeks, Tigrayan forces have struck out into neighbouring Amhara and Afar regions. They're under the overall command of General Tzadkan Gebre Tensai, a Tigrayan who used to be chief of staff of the Ethiopian army. In a rare interview by t satellite phone to Tigray, I asked the general why his forces had taken part in the incursion into Afar region. I don't know if I may call it an incursion. In any case... As you know, Tigray, the entire region is under blockade by Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. And we have to break that uh, blockade. One area to do this is the Afar area. I mean, have you managed to break that blockade? Are aid supplies now flowing from Djibouti into Tigray? Not yet. Are there any other routes into Tigray for aid? Yes, the western corridor that connects Tigray with Sudan is another one. And is aid coming in through there now? No, not yet. OK, well, let's just turn to the Amhara region. And again, I'm asking you why the need for uh, incursions into Amhara by Tigrayan forces? All our activities, military activities at this time, are governed by two major objectives. One is to break off the blockade that has been imposed on the entire region, on the entire population of the people of Tigray. And the second is to force the government to accept our terms for a ceasefire. And then a dialogue for political solutions to the situation in Ethiopia. But uh, that Tigrayan incursion into Amhara region is all about regaining territory, is it not, that you claim has been taken from the Tigray region by Amhara militias? Yes, that is true. The Amhara militias are still in western Tigray, but that's not a pit for that kind of uh, military operation. At the end of the day, ultimately, we will definitely regain our territory. But at present, the main objective is to break the blockade and at the same time, pressurize the government to accept our conditions for ceasefire and ultimate political solution. OK, you've mentioned your ceasefire conditions a number of times. Um, I know that there are quite a few of them. So could you perhaps tell me which are the principal conditions under which Tigrayan forces would lay down their arms? Because, of course, the Ethiopian government says uh, it has already declared a unilateral ceasefire. As you know, this, this uh, unilateral ceasefire is uh, a non-starter. We have put three conditions. Number one, the siege or the blockade has to be lifted. All humanitarian assistance has to flow into Tigray. The second is to stop the persecution of Tigrayans in Addis Ababa. And the third is release political prisoners. All political prisoners, not only thousands of Tigrayan officers who have been serving gloriously in the Ethiopian Armed Forces and other Tigrayans, but other major political actors in the Ethiopian political space. Once the ceasefire agreement is reached upon, almost immediately there has to be an inclusive 
political dialogue that includes the major political forces in Ethiopia, finally to arrive at a transitional arrangement to decide on the political future of the Ethiopian state. But who are you as one region of Ethiopia to try to determine the political future of the entire country? You are just one region. No, we did not say we are to determine the political future of Ethiopia. I said we will be a partner in the determination of the political future of Ethiopia with the major political forces in Ethiopia once the ceasefire has been agreed upon. But what kind of a relationship do you foresee Tigray having with the rest of Ethiopia? Do you want full independence? Or could it be that you want, again, a dominant political role for the TPLF in the central government in Addis Ababa, as you enjoyed under Mela Sanawi? The second alternative you raised is not an alternative. As to the first alternative, that is, what kind of future do you see in Tigray? That will be decided upon the coming political processes. And it will be decided by the people of Tigray, not by uh, a political party. Ultimately, it shall be decided by the free will of the people of Tigray. So what you are suggesting is a referendum on independence in Tigray? Whether independence or federal arrangement or any kind of arrangement, yes, a referendum after the dialogue that includes the political forces in Ethiopia. I am telling you the first thing has to be the ceasefire to be agreed between the warring parties alone, and then there has to be a political process that will lead into a political settlement. Whatever that political settlement might be will be discussed in the future and in the general public. General, do you regret any of what has happened since last November, and I'm leaving aside how this conflict actually began, but uh, the loss of life there has been on both sides, uh, both amongst the militaries and indeed uh, the civilian population. This is a war that shouldn't have happened. As a citizen, I have tried my best to avoid the war with the top political leaders both in Tigray and in Addis Ababa. The Addis Ababa regime was not willing to consider peaceful political solutions. So it was imposed upon the people of Tigray by disregarding the current constitution and trying to impose their political will. So the people of Tigray had to fight, and they fought well. What do you regret? I regret that this has happened. I regret that the war should have been, could have been avoided. But at the same time, I'm, I'm happy that the people of Tigray fought and are in a position now to demand their rightful position in the region. That was uh, General Zakan Gebre Tensai speaking to me by satellite phone from Tigray. And we tried to get a response to that interview. Uh, from several members of the Ethiopian government, but have not heard back from them. Let's speak to the BBC's uh, Africa editor, Mary Harper. And Mary, firstly, is the general, is um, Tigray in a position to start dictating terms uh, to the Ethiopian government? Tigray might think that it's in that kind of position because it has had some astounding military successes in recent weeks after being pretty much uh, booted out, at least uh, in terms of sort of significant towns and other areas by federal forces and many regional militias. They then, there was an astounding turnaround and they recaptured the capital of Tigray, Mekele and several other areas. There was um, a kind of routing of the Ethiopian defence forces. But at the same time, if you think about Ethiopia, the Tigrayans only make up about 6% of the population. They might have a lot of resources, a huge amount of military know-how. They were in control of the country, even though being such a small sort of 
pocket in terms of ethnicity uh, since 1991, but how they can imagine that they are going to somehow dominate Ethiopia and its political system is quite difficult to imagine. Nonetheless, um, he laid out the general a number of um, conditions uh, attached to a ceasefire. Are any of those uh, going to be able to be um, carried out by the Ethiopian government? The release of political prisoners, for instance, the ending of the blockade of Tigray. There's so many contradictions in all of this. I mean, in terms of the demands of, of the Tigrayan forces and the Tigrayan kind of regional authority now there, um, even though uh, some of them seem quite reasonable in terms of they want um, the harassment, the persecution, as they see it, of Tigrayans elsewhere in the country, especially in the capital Addis Ababa, to cease. They want uh, humanitarian aid to be able to enter the the territory. Um, somehow the Ethiopian federal authorities don't really want to capitulate to these demands. They say they've declared a unilateral ceasefire, which uh, the general himself, General Tsadkan, and others have said is completely meaningless. So at the moment, it really does look like a stalemate, both in terms of the sort of political future and the military future of Ethiopia. Nonetheless, um, with Tigray being so insistent on going its own way, is that going to infect, if I can use that word, the rest of Ethiopia? Is it going to lead, do you think, to the fragmentation of the country? That's what a lot of analysts and Ethiopians are saying, that basically what we're beginning to see is a kind of Yugoslavia model balkanization of Ethiopia. Um, the, the, the design, the political design of Ethiopia that was um, created by, in fact, the Tigrayan uh, ethnic leader Meles Zenawi, who was in charge of Ethiopia um, from 1991 till 2018. He designed the system of kind of ethno-federalism in Ethiopia, so each ethnic group was given a lot of control over its own area, and in some ways that has been a recipe for the disaster that's unfolding in Ethiopia right now, because each ethnic group kind of wants its own region to have a lot of authority and autonomy, and uh, slightly ignoring what's going on federally. Mary, many thanks for that. That was uh, the BBC's Africa editor, Mary Harper. You're listening to the BBC World Service, and this is News Hour.